Okay, Equalters, welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks so much for joining us today. Okay, first of all, I'm just giving you the heads up. I'm having a little allergies going on, so I'm wearing my glasses. I sound a little froggy. We're all healthy and safe here in the Dream Studio. Allergy season, though, apparently it's gonna snow six inches tomorrow in Nebraska. But Emily's in the house. How are you, my friend? In the house, doing great, thank you. Now, I hear you had kind of an exciting weekend. You learned how to do something. I did, I learned how to bind. Yeah, our good friend, Christina Morrow of yeah. Tomorrow's Quilts. She is so good, Pam. Like, mm -hmm. I was just blown away watching her go. She made it look so easy. She walked me through all of the step-by-steps, the tips and tricks. So I feel a lot more confident going into binding from now on. Wonderful, yes. huge shout out to Christina for helping her. Um, so Christina can be like one of your mentors. We talked about mentors yesterday. Yes, and you're my mentor too, Pam. Oh, see, thank you. I, it was just, Christina is one of my favorite people. She um, designed the pattern for my skull quilt. Yes, that's that right. We were talking Taylor. about how cool that is. She is excited to write that up, I think, and help yeah. you write that up. <laughs> all good. All right, so where is everybody watching from today? Beth is watching from Meridian, Idaho. Oh, and Julie says they have pollen here too. <laughs> it's all the things, right? Central Florida, Jolene is from Central Florida, and Lynn is there from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Congratulations, we're all happy you're here. Here are the new projects from our countdown video. Up first is Barbara B. All right, so Emily, do you know which dyes she used to make this project? Because this well, is super cool. I believe I'm seeing Basket of Lilies. You are. Which was one of our dyes to try. And then I think on the outside, is that Arkansas Traveler? It is, and I just think it's beautiful. I love the concept of how she made all the different colors. Kind of looks like Lattice, that Arkansas Traveler. It does. Like you might have in a Lattice trellis. Absolutely. Next, we have this amazing quote by Candace C. So, Candace, I think this is Snowball, Flowering Snowball, which is a dye that I made. I, I made a quilt from this dye, gosh, eight years ago. Yeah. And I was so impressed at how quickly and easily and perfectly it came together. Mm -hmm. But I do love all the scrappiness of it. Good job, Candace. I agree. And finally, L, or Lou S has put this together. So do you know this dye, Emily? The good old snail's trail. Good old snail's trail. We have it in two sizes. And I think it's beautiful for the 4th of July. It kind of looks like fireworks, right? It Little does, absolutely. Trailing. All right, today is all about the new Go Grandmother's Fan Dye. It is our March dye to try, and it's only available from AccuQuilt.com. And I have already seen on social media so many of you posting your pictures and saying how great this dye is and how easy it goes together. We're gonna to show you how fast and easy it goes together. So here is my photo of the day. So when I was a kid, my grandmother had an old coffee pot like this that percolated coffee on her stove. And as a kid, I thought that was so fascinating. And her house always smelled like really strong coffee and bacon in the morning. Mm, it was a yum. great, it was a great thing. So the question of the day in the comments section, type in what is your favorite memory of your grandmother? So Emily, do you have a favorite memory of your, any of your grandmothers? Oh gosh, well I grew up with, so my Nana um, was 103 when she passed. So she was with us for Amazing. quite a while on my mom's side. Um, I didn't really know my one on my, my dad's side, but we got had some really fabulous memories together. Um, I'd say my favorite was her story of how she got her cat and named her Edie. Okay. There was a song from the 1940s that was Edie was a lady. Okay. And it was, you know, it was a very cute little ditty that she would just occasionally recite from time to time. Okay. So when it came time to name this cat, we were like, okay, what, you know, we're thinking fluffy, you know, right. something just really simple. She's like, her name is Edie because she is a lady. <laughs> Love All it. right, Nana. <laughs> Love it. All right, so let us know what's your favorite memory of your grandmother. I think it's going to be funny. Oakley is going to say forevermore. Um, I swim almost every day, and she often says to me, Lola, why do you smell like the pool? So I feel like she's going to grow up and say, my Lola always smelled like the pool. <laughs> All right, the pattern we're showcasing today is behind our friend Emily. It's called Go Fans All Around. It is the pattern that is on the packaging, 
and it is a free downloadable pattern at AccuQuilt.com. And it's beautiful and it uses sashing and uh, setting triangles. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. We have a special promo for you today. 44% off go dies, cubes, and bundles. The code you want to use is save my 44, S-A-V-E-M-Y 44, or $200 off the Ready, Set, Go, which is our ultimate fabric cutting system. It has our Go manual machine, our two and a half inch strip die, um, an eight inch cube, a great book by the amazing Eleanor Burns, a die pick and all the mats that you need. So um, $200 off the Ready, Set, Go, or if you're looking to upgrade and use the machine that I use every single day, the Go Big Electric Fabric Cutter is also part of that Save 200. Remember, you can just use one code per order, all right? But today is a really great day to upgrade. This month at AccuQuilt, we are celebrating March Machine Madness with all the basketball that's happening. I'm loving it. <laughs> um, and so don't forget those um, promos. Oh, did I do that wrong? I'm good. I read it wrong. We're good. Today I'm giving away one of our Go Grandmother fan dies. Be sure to register for future events um, on the AccuQuilt uh, event page for your chance to win. By registering, you'll receive event emails, and that way you're never going to miss an exciting tutorial. Emily's going to announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of our show. All right. <clears throat> Grandmother's fan is a tr really, truly a traditional block and it would usually be cut with paper templates. But AccuQuilt brings cutting these shapes to a whole new level. So let's take a look at the die. I have several of them over here. Ooh, I'm gonna move my drink here. <laughs> All right. Um, this is AccuQuilt's newest block and board or bob die. A bob die allows you to cut all the pieces for one block in just one pass through the cutter. This is an AccuQuilt innovation and it makes cutting fabric 90% faster than traditional uh, cutting methods and it's accurate every single time. So let's look at it here. So it only has three shapes, okay? And each of the shapes are screen printed for easy placement and piecing. This is the spokes. Oh, here's the block. Here, that will help you. Here we go. So here are the spokes. You need six of those. You need a center arc and an outer arc, okay? And to help you with this, because this is a curved piece, we have notches right here, which is super cool. Um, it's gonna allow you to get your pieces and they're gonna line up perfectly, okay? And in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to lay out the fabric. The big question quilters ask all the time, what is the difference between Dresden plate, and there's the die for that, or, and grandmother's flower guard, or grandmother's fan. All right, so let's look here. I'm gonna use this block because it's a little bit brighter and easier to see, okay? So here is the um, grandmother's fan, okay? This is the new die that we just released. And this is the Dresden plate block. Now, when you look at Dresden plate, there's actually a shape on it that looks just like this. Mm -hmm. And you fold it and sew it so it becomes the points. And then on the Dresden plate, there's also the rounded pieces. This shape is meant to be appliqued onto a 14 inch square, finished square, so 14 and a half inches. All right, so this is, even though you piece it, it's meant to be applique, which means it has the applique for download for the circle, whereas grandmother's fan is meant to be in quarter sections, just like we have it here. And on the quilt behind Emily, we'll show you here in just a few minutes, um, it actually has sashing and cornerstones between it, and that's exactly how it is meant to be presented. All right, so this is often a pattern that you see with grandmother's fan is kind of this um, serpentine kind of look, which is super cool. Every time I see this, I always think, Emily, it should look like keyboards, like yeah. we should do white and black. I can totally see I that. Know, in my head, I think that that's, 
<laughs> how it should be, okay? So you have a lot of options on how to create your block. And today we're gonna, because I have so many pieces, look at how many pieces I have. Um, we're gonna show you how to cut and sew. The center arch is actually a different color than the outer arch, mm -hmm. which is what it is on the pattern. But you totally could make it just the white, okay? So lots, I, the thing I love about Grandmother's Fan is there are lots of options on how to create it and how to piece it. You could make it totally scrappy, um, all sorts of really fun things. All right, now I'm gonna move this so I can lay out some fabric. All right, so remember you can always cut up to six layers of cotton in one pass through the cutter, but you could also cut flannel and felt and denim and wool and cork and minky to start with one or two layers of those. The thing to remember, this section right here, and I have some pieces cut, is that these are directional, okay? So not all of the pieces go the same direction. So keep that in mind. You wanna, each piece has a skinny end and a fat end, mm -hmm. right? And it's important because at the end of today's show, I'm gonna show you this block that I made and it was important to keep track of the fat end and the skinny end, okay? Now let's lay out our fabric. I'm gonna just cut um, three colors. I have these pretty colors here, these blue and pink and green. And I just am gonna cut um, three of each color. I'm gonna line up my fabric here. I'm gonna have a little extra, but that's okay, because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with it here at the end, okay? And then I want my section A to be different than my outer arch. So I've just cut squares of this. And then because I don't want, if I was just doing the whole thing white mm -hmm. and white, I would just cut a square here. But I cut a square and then actually I'm gonna fold it in half. This is my extra piece. I was wondering how you were I know, do were that. you thinking, you were thinking, hey, wait a minute, how is this gonna work? Yeah, There's this is how it's gonna work. <laughs> Yeah, and that way, I mean, I just, I just want to make sure that I'm just getting the most use out of my fabric as I can. Absolutely. And then you're going to have some scraps left, but it's okay. All right? So make sure you have a 10 by 24 cutting mat. Emily, what happens if you try to use it without a mat? Unfortunately, not a darn thing. Not a darn thing. <laughs> and this is on a 10 by 24 die board, so it's going to fit through your go and your go big. Okay, don't forget that go big, $200 off today. All right, Emily, why we cut, tell us what people remember about their grandmothers. Yes, and actually while it's going through the go big, I have a question too from a viewer. They're wondering why the blue light would come on on the go big possibly. Oh, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> but yes, we do have several. Okay, Wendy says that she loves her grandma's homemade okra pickles. Okra pickles? I, that's what it says. Okay, I've or I've pick, never maybe had pickled that. okra. That would pickled I, okra. That's got to be it. Yeah, no, that's great. That sounds delish. Um, Bia says my grandma loved flower gardening and quilting. Oh, there you go. Love that. Gosh, I hope Oakley says my Lola loved quilting. <laughs> How could she not? I don't know. I just worry about stuff like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure she knows what we're doing in life. Right. Okay. I love it. All right, so now I've cut my pieces. I have some extra here because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, so somebody asked about the blue light. Okay, Justin, can we get a good shot right here? Okay, so here in the Dream Studio, it's super staticky. Mm -hmm. um, it's really dry. And sometimes when you run those dyes through the cutter, you have a tendency to put that dye right back up here and get it. And the static builds up and that little blue light comes on. Okay. So if it comes on, one, stop putting your dyes here. Sure. You know, put them down on a table. Oh, see right there? There it is. Yeah, because it's full of static. So to stop it, you can turn it off. Mine just goes away once I take the staticky thing away. Perfect. Okay. All right, so that's a great question. All right, and don't forget to turn your go big off at night. Do you know it doesn't turn off by itself? Yes. So make sure you're turning it off. 
All right, join Lynn, Eric, and myself on Tuesday, March 15th, as we launch not one, not two, not three, but four new dives that will surely have you doing a happy dance. Register in the link below for the chance to win prizes. It's gonna be a great time. Now that all of our pieces are cut, we can start sewing the fan together. And we're gonna begin with our spokes. Remember, you need six to finish each fan. And this is gonna go together super fast. So I'm actually gonna do two fans at one time, all right? So you wanna make sure that you're putting it together in the same order, right? Now, does it matter if you fan fold it all, Pam, on when you're cutting on with this die? It doesn't. Yeah. I just put them all the way facing up so I could keep track of my pieces. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Oh, look, I already sewed that one. These are my pieces that, oh, here, these are ones I haven't cut yet. I was like, wait, how did that happen? All right, so I'm going to lay these here while I'm laying out my little fans. Emily, tell us what are people... Yes. Remembering about their nanas and this their lobas. This is so sweet. So we've got a lot of folks that are remembering their grandma's cooking. Yes. So Peggy says that she made the best cinnamon rolls. I miss her so much. Oh. Um, Cecilia's grandmother made quilts as well. That's her favorite memory together, making quilts together. There you go. Um, and then Heather said playing games, Yahtzee and bingo. Okay, we used to play games with my grandma and I'm pretty sure she cheated. Because she won all the time. And I kept thinking, Nano, how did that happen? Yeah. Wait a second. I thought you were supposed to let me win. Yeah. <laughs> my, my little kid head, I thought, wait. She, I'm sure she didn't. Oh. Okay, so there's two of those and two of these. We're just going to go through. I'm going to show you how fast it's going to go together. Yes. I really do love this black. And I feel like so many of our viewers, Emily, who got it when it launched, mm -hmm. are just thinking how fast and easy it is. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I think that that's the cool part. All right, I'm gonna get my iron and my wool mat. Oh, I love this one. And think, and speaking of um, your memories when you were talking about, you know, those the smells in the morning, Susan says that her favorite memory was cooking breakfast on a wood-burning stove at the log cabin in Maine with her. Oh grandma. my gosh. Does oh. that sound fabulous or what? That just sounds so good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just chain piece. And this is a great chain piecing block. Mm -hmm. Everything is gonna line up together. Hey, don't forget to get your machine uh, cleaned. I took ours to the Celtic Quilter last week. It is a whole new machine now, boy. That is awesome. Tell ya. They said it was very, very dirty. Goodness. And yeah. Emily, yours is there getting serviced, your new one. I was just going to say, I can't wait Reba. to hear what they say about Reba, because she's she's been in the doctor for a little bit. We're going to get her all tuned up, and I hope that she works just fine. I'm just oh, she's excited be to hear what, hear what all they had to do for her. <laughs> she's going to be great. <laughs> all right, so tell us what our folks remembering about their grandmas. Yes. Patty says, my grandmother taught me how to crochet and was an amazing cook and baker. Do you ever crochet? Never. Never? No, I don't know why. I dabbled. I, I guess I just didn't really know anybody who did crochet. Sure. I know, I feel like it's one of those great activities that you kind of pass along to a family member. Yeah. No, I just feel like I just didn't really know anybody, so mm -hmm. I didn't really have a crocheting mentor. Sure. But a lot of friends I have who are quilters do all the things. Yeah. You know, they do needlepoint and crochet and you know, all the stuff. Yeah. I'm a needlepointer, too. Are I you? It. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm making my friend a fun little wall hanging right now for her um, for her new house that they moved into. So. There you go. A little bit of fun. Janie. Right. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, what are people remembering about their grandmas? Yeah, Janie, actually, um, her grandmother taught her how to do needlepoint, and she was a voracious reader like she is as well. Yeah. Um, let's My see. grandma loved to golf. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, I was kind of, I was too little to really learn how to golf, but like my older brothers and stuff golf with her. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. My grandma was so funny. She would, she had a set of golf clubs, but... To my knowledge, I think she golfed maybe like five, like a handful of times. Ah, <laughs> there you go. 
I did get okay. to drive the cart. I thought that was pretty exactly. cool. Exactly. See, that would be the fun part. Just getting out, get the walking in. The fresh air, the sunshine. Exactly. Okay, so look how fast I sewed those together. So cutting them out was so fast, and now chain piecing is so fast. All right, awesome. so I'm going to lay my pieces out so I sew them in the correct order. It's important to do that. And remind me, this is a nine inch finished. It is a nine inch finished block, block. correct. So okay. we have some other nine inch finished bobs. Do you know what they are? We sure do. Actually, we've got a few that are qualifying for our sale today as well. Excellent. So Excellent. Um, we've got the crossed canoes, which is a nine inch. Oh, that finish. one's really fun. Erica likes that one a she lot. She does like crossed canoes. <laughs> She's so funny about it. She's real passionate about it too. She's like, we never talk about this enough. I'm I love like, it. Okay. <laughs> well, we better be sure to shout it out then. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the starry path today which is only 52 with that so those discount. are all part of the save my 44 yes these are all part of the save my 44 as is the glorified nine patch which is also a fan favorite for erica absolutely that one's a really really fun die i love starry path it's a pretty one yeah it gives a lot yeah. of movement a lot of you know angle dimension so much fun yeah Yes, and we even have, I mean, I don't know if y'all are in the, the market for the nine inch cube or anything like that, but we do, you know, with all those bundles on sale right now, if the nine inch cube is something that y'all have sure, been- Sure, cause you could use, make nine inch blocks. Yeah, you can make the it. nine inch blocks to go along with it. You've got so many options. Um, we have the nine inch complete die bundle, which is not only the nine inch cube. Okay. It's the companion sets. Okay. It's the strip cutter, the two and a half inch for binding. Okay. All the cutting mats you need and the Eleanor Burns book, as well as a quilting ruler. Wow. Yeah, and that's on sale for that 44% off, which brings it down to 407 when change. So a great day today, if you've not gotten the nine inch cube, mm -hmm. it's a great day to get that nine inch cube in Companions. Absolutely. That's a great price. It gives you so many options. Mm -hmm. it's, I've actually had my eye on the eight inch Companion sets. So there you I go, the save inches. 44. Exactly. Right. Very exciting time. Oh, and Jenny's wondering, since you were just pressing your seams, Pardon? Why, since we were just pressing our seams before you um, started sewing again. Oh, which, we're gonna press them open. We're gonna press them open, okay. Yep, you're gonna see in just a second. Okay. I was, so, okay, so look how fast I sewed all the blades together for two blocks. Wow. Yeah, it just goes so fast, which is one of the things I love about it. Right, we cut them fast, we cut them accurately. Mm -hmm. Now we can use a perfect quarter inch seam and sew them together. Mm -hmm. So much fun. And honestly, Emily, I was really hoping yes for tomorrow to have like two feet of snow. Mm -hmm. So I could just sit and sew. Wouldn't that be nice? I had plans, but I mean, I, I'm doing work stuff. Exactly. But kind of fun. See, my weekend just changed too, so I'm hoping that it's gonna be, yeah, let's get just get snowed in, do a yeah. lot of quilting, it'll be a good, yeah. good time. <laughs> All right, so don't forget we sell our little clover iron and our wool pressing mats on our website. Yes. And if you don't have one, boy, how do you need to get one? Because this is the perfect project where you're gonna need it, because you just need to just get in there and iron down this little piece right here. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to press our seams open, and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to add the inner and outer arch, okay? Love that. All right. All right, so what are people remembering about their grandmas? Absolutely. So we've got a lot of fun memories here. Um, oh, this is so cute. Kathy says her salt and pepper shakers were her favorite memory. I wonder oh, if she collected them. She probably did. I always okay, we had a show long, 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 like two years ago when we first started doing Tuesday shows and we talked about, or Wednesday shows, we talked about what people collected. And there was um, one of our quilters that had like over 400 salt and pepper shakers. What? Yeah, because we talked about, you know, besides your stash, what else do you collect? Sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Fun. I know. Isn't that fun? Oh, I, I think that's that. sweet. Every day, every meal, you're going to think of her. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. My friend has a little set of corgi salt and pepper shakers. They're oh, very, very don't cool. tell Erica and Joy. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes, they'll be wanting them. I do love those corgis. I know, right? There's got to be, there's maybe, no, not yet, but there's a Custom Shape Pros have the die for that. Custom Shape Pros does they sure have do. a corgi die for that. Love that. 
If you have a Corgi boy, check out Custom Shake Pros. For those of you who wondered, that's our sister company. Mm -hmm. And they will make um, a custom die for you with any um, non-licensed shape. So you can't have mouse ears. Right, exactly. But yeah, if you can if you can draw it up, they can do it. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, we have a super cool team there. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna grab my pins. Uh, now, the pin cushion die is already part of something, right, Emily? Yeah, actually, the pin cushion die is already marked down today. Um, it's usually, I believe, 99. It's marked down to $80.99. Excellent. So yeah, great time you to pick up that pin cushion. need a little pin cushion. cushion. All right, so we're gonna do this one at a time. So we're gonna add the inner curve and look, we have notches right here. And these notches are gonna let you line up everything perfectly, All right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right here and at every notch, I'm gonna put in a pin. For those of you who learned how to do dressmaking and costume making, mm -hmm. this, is, this is your jam because the notches are there to help you with that. Okay, and it's gonna really make it go easy through the um, sewing machine because your pieces are notched. This is my first time seeing a curved piece sewn, Pam. I just realized Really? That. Yes, and I'm so excited. Welcome to Wednesdays. It, you're making it look so easy. It really is. You just have to bring your patience. Yeah. Don't, don't, it's not a, it's not a marathon. Pins and patience. It's not a sprint, right? It's a marathon, <laughs> right? Go yeah. slow. There we go. Absolutely. All right. All right. So, what else are people remembering about their grandmas? Yes, and let me just see loving if we have this any questions today too. Oh yeah. So we we do have a few folks that are kind of wondering like Talk what, to how, and why you determine which side to press to when you're pressing your seam. Right. Okay. So that is a question we answer a lot, and I'm glad you asked. If my block has more than two or three pieces or four pieces, I am always going to press my seams open. Okay. And every single time, if my block has a curve, mm -hmm. I'm gonna press my seams open. Because you're gonna find that as you pin it and you sew on it, mm -hmm. it's gonna stay together so much easier, it's gonna lay flatter. Gotcha, If gotcha. you If you did it to one side, um, it might create a little bulk there. Okay. Okay. And our, if you look at the pattern, um, it will tell you those pressing instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was my biggest first rookie mistake right there is not listening to the instructions on pressing. <laughs> <laughs> not even caring about that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just doing your thing. You just went for it. <laughs> she did. She, it was great. It was a good learning experience though, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. We learn something new every, every project. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna start and I'm gonna go so slow as I go around my curve here, I'm gonna try not to run over my pin. Love this. Okay. We've got some more fun answers too. Ooh. Okay, who's asking? Mary the Ellen says when they went to visit her grandparents, my grandma would make fresh cake type donuts. Oh, what a memory. Man. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Cake donuts are my favorite, Mary Ellen. Just saying. <laughs> What's happening here? Hold on here. We got a. Our, oh, our machine is angry. Hold on here. I gotta re redo my machine here, hold on. I'm gonna rethread it and I have my glasses on today so Justin doesn't have to help, which is <laughs> always a win. All right, so while I'm rethreading my machine so we don't have big things going on. Sure, absolutely. Cake donuts, boy, that Cake sounds donuts. delicious. I know, right, those are the best treat ever. Um, Judy said she loved her grandma's vegetable soup. Grandma always wanted to feed us when we came over. Oh, I think that that's true for all grandmas. Absolutely. When I would go to my grandma, she would say, I'm sure you haven't eaten yet. Yes. <laughs> Pretty I sure know. I had, but that was okay. I know, so sweet. There we go. Ooh. Oh, Terry says that she that um, they had one of those same coffee pots that you showed in the photo yes. of the day. Um, yes. She said um, her grandmother also made quilts entirely by hand, hand cut, hand patched together, and hand quilted. I, wow. She has one of her wedding ring quilts still. Wow, that's impressive. That is amazing. Okay, here we go. 
I learned at, at the binding class too that I saw a photo of, of how a double wedding ring was bound with those circles on the edges. Right. I have a whole new respect for those so, making those right. quilts. <laughs> so that's called a bias binding. Unbelievable. And we have lots of videos to tell you how to make bias binding. Yes, yeah, so so handy dandy on our YouTube and Facebook pages yes. where all those live, so. Yes, wasn't that so fun to watch me rethread my machine here? All right, so hold on here. I'm gonna make sure it works. Oh, it's happy. Oh, job. Oh, you just want it to be happy, holy smokes. Oh, this is so sweet, Pam. Julie okay. says that her grandma taught her to cook and sew, but we used to be silly and dance in the kitchen, and that's what I miss about her most, just the silly Oh, time. that is so sweet. That's so, so, so sweet. I love dancing in the kitchen while cooking. That's the best time ever. <laughs> just, okay, know. in my whole life, I'm pretty sure I've never danced in the kitchen while cooking, but I'm oh, gonna yeah. try it now. Oh yeah, jam out to a little James Taylor, why not? <laughs> life is short, dance in the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. All right, so now I'm gonna line, because I took my pins out, I'm gonna line up my notches, make sure my fabric is laying open here. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you're doing that good quarter inch seam. Don't think it's not, it's not a scant quarter inch seam, it's a true quarter inch seam, mm -hmm. okay? Make sure you're doing them just right. Pull out those pins. This is so cute, Pam. Uh, okay. Donna Ray has a memory of telling, of her grandma telling her to get out of the apple tree when she was six years old. <laughs> there you go. Climbing trees, just wreaking havoc, huh, Donna? <laughs> Love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How fun. Ooh, Linda used to help grandma pull taffy in the winter. Oh, wow. That would be cool. That's that like is a, a great, okay, hold on here. I'm that's like a bucket I'm talking list and activity. got my pin still in here, so I can't get my notch to line up. There it goes. Pulling taffy. I've, have you ever done that? I've done it as a kid. No, that's like on a on my bucket list of things to make, though. That looks go. like a blast. There you go. Right. Ooh, Joyce says she loved her grandma's fig jam, homemade fig jam. Oh yeah, we used to make jam back in the day. I love that. All right, so now look. Ha, ta da. All right, so now I'm going to, this is gonna have a natural way to kind of press. Mm -hmm. And if I come here along the top, I can just press it down. And you're gonna see that that curve is gonna have a natural way to just lay flat. But look at that. And you're pressing from the top this time. I, I do so that I can make sure that my circle my little arch, sure. they get all the pieces of it. Sure. Yeah. And then I would make sure you have a good iron to press that with, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so now let's do um, the outer arch, okay. right? And again, don't be scared of curves. We have lots of videos on our Facebook page and our YouTube pages, right, Emily, mm -hmm. that I they sure can do. do that. They can learn all about curves. Yes, all okay. of our. So now look, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. All right, so I'm gonna line up the notches and I'm gonna put in a pin. And so, you start from the center rather than like either of the edges. I do, Okay. and I go to either of the edges. And I find that that works the best for me. Yeah, probably makes things a little bit more even all the way around. Right, Yeah. right. And I always start at the end though. Don't start, I don't start in the middle. Some people I know who sew curves start in the middle and they do one side mm -hmm. and then the other. I, I just start from the left and work to the right. Mm -hmm. So the question people ask all the time was why is AccuQuilt fabric cutter better than rotary cutting? Okay, first of all, you could not cut this block with a rotary cutter. Mm -hmm. You would have to have a paper template or a plastic template and scissors. So right there, it's so much harder. It's never gonna be accurate. And that's the thing, right, about AccuQuilt is that it's accurate every single time. Absolutely. Okay, look at this. And could you imagine doing this without the little notches? No, no. The notches are the magic in it as well. They really are. All right. So now I'm gonna start here at the end and just do the exact same thing I did before 
gonna go back here a stitch or two. And keep those pins right where they need to be. Okay, and then pull them out so you don't run over your needle. Emily, do you know what happens if you run over a pin with your needle? Um, doesn't it like break the needle? Yeah. <laughs> I think I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, very much so it does. <laughs> yeah, you try to try to not do that. It makes it better. All right, don't forget our promo today, 44% off the ice cubes and bundles. And Emily, do we have some other great ideas of things they can get with that 44% off? Yeah, I mean, going into, you know, spring, summer, we've got so many great medley dyes. On oh, yes, catalog. we have a we have a bundle of medleys, right? Yeah, we sure do. So we've actually got a couple of them, but I think the Four Seasons dye bundle would be like the perfect choice, especially going into spring. Okay, and what does the Four Seasons bundle have it in it? It has the spring, the summer, the fall, and the holiday medleys. Oh, so fun. So spring medley in time for Easter, it has bunnies and baskets. Little eggies. Oh, Eggs. So cute. I was trying summer, to remember what yep. else was the on there. The summer has like the, the pail and the, the uh, flip flops. Flip flops and so cute for the beach. Um, fall has, of course, those leaves and just, just so much fun for, you know, going into going into all these different holidays. And that bundle is on sale for 165. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And don't forget with all of those applique shapes, we have not only free embroidery downloads, but we have some for purchase. We do. That are really, really cute. Our good friends at V Stitch and Marjorie Busby, we have a couple of designers that do those for us. Yeah, they're so creative. It's amazing what they come up with. Don't lose pins. Boy, that's how you know you're a quilter when you step on a pin <laughs> on your bare feet. Absolutely. Oh, man. All right, so now look at this. Okay, I'll show you on the other side. Look at how great that turned out. Wow. And the thing that's so fun about this is that every single time it's going to turn out like that. All right. Now I'm gonna just take my little shovel iron and press along here. Um, I'm gonna do it again from the top to make sure I get that little piece down. And then I for sure would use my big iron to finish pressing. Sure. And today I'm gonna give away one of our Go Grandmother fan dies. Be sure to register for future events for the chance to win. All right, so I added that outer arch and there we go. So my big tips are Pin, pin, pin. Mm -hmm. Pin the arch, the center arch, and the outer arch. Now this block finishes to nine inches. To complete the project, you will need the go nine inch setting triangles. All right? And um, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna cut some of those in just a second. Don't forget, all of our videos live on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you need to go back, you can watch them. If you're looking at this one thinking, gosh, how did Pam put that grandmother's fan together? You can go back and watch it. Emily, before I cut setting triangles, do you want to talk about our blog? And I will get our setting triangles ready. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a fabulous blog that's written by Aki Quilters as well as our go-getters. Um, it has exclusive patterns um, and some fabulous stories by these, you know, go-getters who are just doing an awesome job getting creative with our with our dyes. Those patterns are gonna be exclusive to the blog. So you'll definitely wanna make sure and check those out. And with it being International Women's Day today, I believe we've got a celebratory blog post, I believe. We do, so. yesterday um, we celebrated women and mentors and quilting. We had a great show. If you didn't get a chance, you can watch it again. And our blog is, um, it has Erica and Joy and Karen and I, yep. and kind of our stories of how we became part of quilting and our mentors. So fun. It was really fun. All right, let's talk about setting triangles. So Brock, I'm gonna, or Brock, Justin, I'm gonna come right back here and talk about this. Okay, first of all, this is a variation of Grandmother's Fan. This is from Larkspur Quilts, and it is all my favorite of all of the Grandmother Fans. This is the Grandmother Fan block right here, okay? And these are setting triangles. This allows you to turn the block on point. All right, so let me grab a block. Just stand right there. Thank you, Justin. Okay, so here's that block. Here it is on point. Normally the one behind um, Emily is also on point. 
this is what you need, those nine inch setting triangles. It's gonna cut the corner and the sides right here for the top and the bottom. And this one is cool. Emily, are these on sale or letters? Yes, we actually, so um, those are gonna be the classics. And yes, those do qualify there for the 44% off. And then we do also have a bundle with the carefree alphabet and numbers. Oh, okay. So yeah, those are all on sale today. All right. All right, so this is the nine inch setting triangles. We have them for all the sizes of cubes, four, six, eight, nine, 10, and 12. Think about the cube size that you have. Think about the blocks that you're making, maybe the bobs that you're making. Maybe you're making eight inch bobs or 10 or 12 inch bobs, and you wanna turn them on point, this is the die that you need. <coughs> Excuse me, because otherwise you have to do math. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and nobody wants to do that. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna lay down my fabric and then I'm gonna show you how to lay out your blocks. <coughs> Excuse me. For setting triangles. Mm -hmm. And I have one more piece of fabric, hold on. All the fabric that ends up here. <laughs> I believe that setting triangle is also part of today's promotion. <laughs> it's um, with that percentage off, that setting triangle is only gonna be 61 and change today. Oh, see, that's a really great price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely a great idea. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Again, depending on the size of setting triangles, um, it's gonna fit in your go or go big, but the four and six inch fit through the go me. That was a big thud. <laughs> Pam, would you recommend using this die with 10 inch layer cakes? <coughs> well, it will measure. Robbie is we'll measuring. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie, for asking that question. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm gonna look behind you, Emily, at the project. Sure. Look at, I'm gonna go home. See, I save all of these and then I can go home and make blocks. Okay, this goes like this. Yep, you're good. Thank you. All right, and this goes like this. Like this. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ooh, and Lynn asked a really good question about the difference between setting triangles and the companion set, too. So do you know the difference between them, Emily? Well, the big difference with the setting triangles, I believe, is that they're, the way that they're set on the die is so that the lengthwise grain doesn't stretch as it's being right. sewn. Is that right. correct? That is correct. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to have a lot of stretch, and as Pam would say, that will make you cranky. Oh, so cranky. <laughs> so cranky. <laughs> All right, here we go. I have good blocks here. All right. This is such a springy color layout too. It's so it fun. really is. Now on the project behind um, Emily, you're gonna need sashing. I'm gonna show you how to cut the cornerstones for that in just a second. So what you wanna do then is here would be the setting triangle. Okay, so I'll move it, I'll move it, Justin. Okay. And the reason you want that, the reason you want setting triangles is all about the bias. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the setting triangles, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to do all sorts of crazy math to do this center and it's just gonna be hard to cut, but you want that lengthwise grain to go so that this is a tight edge. Sure. Right, you don't want it to be all wonky. All right, so this is kind of how our block is laid out. Here's where the setting triangles would go. We would put another one right up here. Okay. That's right, it just See how that's gonna work? So cool. Yeah. And then you would use our two inch strip die, not two and a half, two inch strip die to cut those sashing pieces. But I wanna show you the super cool trick for the cornerstone. So 
Justin, can you get a little shot of the sh behind the Emily? Emily, do you want to point where those cornerstones are up to your left right there, that little blue? Keep going over. Uh, oh, the blue. Yeah, do one closer to you. Okay. There you go. So see, those are little cornerstones, and they're basically just two inch squares, so they finish to one and three quarters, or one and a half, sorry. All right, so here's what I did. This is, this is gonna be great for you, okay? So these I took and cut two inch strips like I normally do. I just took my scraps, here, we'll cut them. We'll cut them and show you. Because remember I said, oh, hey, at the end, I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? I'm gonna line them up right here. And I am gonna cut, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna make it matter. There we go. I'm gonna line it up here at 90 degrees mm -hmm. so that this line is straight. And I don't need to use my whole big 10 by 24 mat. And in this project, it has the cornerstones all the same. I kind of thought the idea of making them different would be fun. Oh, I think that's adorable. It helps if I turn on the cutter. Oh yeah, make it so scrappy. much Why fabric not? up here all of a sudden. <laughs> so I used a, sh a smaller mat. Remember, it's only going to cut where there's fabric in a mat, which is so cool. All right. Now that I've cut my strips are perfect, mm -hmm. then I'm going to turn them at 90 degrees to make squares. All right. And I already have some other ones. I knew I had other ones. That's why it's okay. so nice to have those angled guidelines on there. Right. And then you could just go all the way down the die board if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna put it right here like this. All right. You can make squares out of any single size strip. If you have two and a half inch strip, you can make two inch square, two and a half inch squares. Three inch, three and a half. All of them make squares. Give it some love, slide, don't lift. Look at these perfect squares. Okay. I love how my phone is in here ringing. Okay. So now look at this. You would cut the strips, the white strips, and now you have cornerstones. So right. Fun. Super, super slick. I do love this fabric. Okay. All right, so that's, you would add those white strips in there, sew these cornerstones to the edge, but follow the um, cutting instructions. Mm -hmm. Follow the pattern. <laughs> it's great to always follow the pattern. All right, now, if you want to change the colorway of your Go Grandmother's Fan Block, check out our free tool called Go Quilt. Mm -hmm. It's available on our AccuQuilt website and what it does is it has hundreds of patterns, including this one, that you could totally change up the colorway. And on that, Emily, mm -hmm. um, on the pattern, if you go to Grandmother's Fan, it also has what they call block assembly instructions, right? Yes, yep, right below that little description, there'll be a green block assembly instructions clickable right there. You should watch that. Now, it also has this super cool thing called a coloring page which I have right here. Oh, thank you. I have right here. Now, Katie from our office, from the marketing department, she thought it would be really fun to take the pencils and make them colored pencils. Cute. All right, so watch this. Here we go. And I did a little, <laughs> I did a little research here, okay? What you want is this, this brown here is still gonna be the same, but the point and then the arch, so the inner arch and outer arch are gonna be the same color. Perfect. And our guys decided that we should use the yellow for the sides and maybe that Crayola green. Oh yeah. The top, so it looked like a box of colored pencils. So cute. Isn't that a clever idea? Good job, Katie, okay? So these are included on all of our Bob dies, so you can go in and say, oh, I, I like this color, I like that color, mm -hmm. all right? Now, a couple of weeks ago on a Tuesday show, 
we talked all about scrap busting. I don't know when it was, but it was a while ago. Oh, it may not have even been a while ago. But one of the techniques was described as crumb quilts. Do you remember that show? I do. And we had two experts and they made these really cool blocks out of crumb um, blocks. And I promised that on that show, I was like, I am gonna take this technique and make a block. <laughs> so here is my block. Can we get a sh shot of it? All right, this is grandmother's fan, okay? Here's the block we made today. Now the thing about this that was so fun was crumb quilts are basically you just take all your scraps mm -hmm. and you sew them all together. So I made scraps that were big enough to cut three sections of my grandmother's fan and then it just made it totally scrappy. But here's the other thing that I wanted. I didn't want all of my spokes to be the same size. That meant when I was cutting my spokes, I just added a little bit of white to the edge and I just eyeballed it. I, was, I thought, oh, well, this is kind of a cool one for here and cool one for there. And I totally eyeballed it. And I love this block. I do too. I will probably make maybe a pillow or something with it. Um, with all of the scraps. And I kept thinking in my quilting head, boy, it is gonna use so much scraps. No, I have way so many more scraps than this, <laughs> okay? So if you have ever wondered how to make a crumb quilt, we have some go-getters that um, on our blog and such talk about it, but this is my block. I love it. Quilters, be sure and fin share your finished projects with us on all of our social media platforms. We would love to see them. Mm -hmm. Join Lynn and Eric and me on Tuesday, March 15th at 12 noon Central Time as we launch not one, not two, not three, but four new dies, and truly you will be doing a happy dance. Register in the link below for the chance to win prizes. Don't forget our promo today, 44% off go dies, cubes, and bundles. Save my 44, or you can get $200 off the Ready, Set, Go, the Ultimate Fabric Cutting System, or the Go Big Electric Fabric Cutter. Use that code SAVE200 at checkout. So remember, you can just use one promo at a time. All right, Emily, do we have a, a winner of our Go Grandmother's Fan? We certainly do. All right, would you announce it? Yes, our winner is Marilyn I from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Congratulations, Marilyn. We're going to send you the new Grandmother's Fan die. You're going to love it. Quilters, be sure to join us next week for our AccuQuote Live at 12 noon Central Time. We are going to cut and sew a block using one of our new dies. It's going to be great. Be sure and register for the event for the chance to win prizes. All right, on behalf of our entire AQ Live team, we have Morgan and Lauren who is helping us off site. Um, we also have Katie does some things in there to help us as well. In the Dream Studio, I have Brock and Justin and Joe and my good friend Emily. I am Pam Heller reminding you at AccuQuote, we help you cut time so you can quote more. We'll see you next week.